Hi, this is Gilles, and yes, I'm on a boat, <laughs> a 20-foot sailboat here in uh, Antibes on the uh, French Riviera. We are on lockdown, mind you, so I won't be able to show you uh, any interesting flight of uh, this new 5-inch drone I'm building, my first 5-inch. I've built a number of them, but smaller of 2, 3, 4 inches, and uh, never a 5-inch drone. I'm starting with the uh, GEP RC Mark IV frame, which some people consider a budget frame, but really uh, I don't see it that way. And I will show you uh, the entire build, also uh, my different choices for the uh, components that I'm using. So let's do it. I've started putting the frame together and it seems very simple. The great thing is that the arms are identical, back and front. You can flip them in any position, so if you break an arm, you can replace it. You don't have to worry about ordering a front or back arm or whatever else. It's just one arm and that's it. The frame is very nice. It's a very good size. It's This is my first 5-inch build and... Uh, uh, it's much bigger than anything else I have, even my 4 inches. There is absolutely no difficulty in putting this frame together. The only thing you have to pay attention to is that the uh, bottom stack holes are chamfered, so uh, the bottom plate uh, goes a certain way. Uh, it's not both ways, so be careful about that. The screws are very nice, uh, chamfered here, back and front. And I have my standoffs ready now, and it's ready to build. You even get four extra standoffs, the long ones, in the box, which is great. I'm using the uh, Mamba 2204 motors, 1450kVs. And these are very small for a 5-inch, so uh, I'm questioning whether this was a smart decision. Uh, these are discontinued also for the moment, I guess, and I had to buy them in Australia. I got six of them for that reason. So we'll have to see how the quad will fly with these motors. I will make it as light as I can, though I don't want to cut every single corner. For instance, I do want to use uh, TPU arm protection, and they're not that heavy, but the four of them, uh, you know, it's a little bit of weight. It's always good to minimize the amount of TPU uh, you put on your quad, uh, just a strict minimum, and I th think this is part of the strict minimum, really. The screws Diatone uh, give you are not long enough for the TPU arm protections, but I'm waiting for uh, titanium screws, actually, so I just put them here. I put two screws per motor, just uh, temporarily, just for the build to attach and solder the wires and I'll switch them out later, um, well, if I get them, otherwise I'll use the provided screws which are just the right length. The motors are really nice, uh, they have a plastic protection here, you can see from the screws at the bottom, uh, so you don't damage the, the windings, which is really nice. Uh, they are very small, 21 uh, grams, uh, very light. To attach the uh, wires on the arms, I'm going to use that stuff here I found on eBay. It's uh, kind of a silicone kind of tape, and it's it's absolutely not sticky, but it, it will stick to itself, and it's, it's crazy how it sticks to itself and nothing else. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's great stuff, I really like it. That stuff is magic, I'll tell you, and it's fairly elastic too, so it does put some uh, tension on the wires. And it goes well, it will go well with the uh, translucid TPU I'm using. I made a uh, custom uh, TPU mount for the GPS here. Well, I took three different mounts from the uh, from Thingiverse and uh, I made it into one. So one mount was for another GPS here. Uh, this, was, uh, this is for the uh, BN180, which is uh, this GPS. And this is a, a true RC barb pole antenna mount, and I basically uh, put them together. And I will uh, put a link to that, of course, in the description. Now, I know the uh, Matek uh, MAQ5883 works better. I have one on my 4-inch, uh, but uh, I really want something simpler, light and cheap. The Matek is about $30. This is less than 10 
and I know it's not as sensitive and it doesn't have a uh, compass, but I'm not going to use uh, iNav on this build. Uh, I like the features of iNav, but it's it's a real pain. <laughs> so I will be using uh, probably better flight on this, maybe uh, Emu flight, I don't know. Uh, but so this should suffice. And it does look good with the uh, back plate in place here, as you can see. I decided to use the uh, JHEMCU all-in-one 40 amp uh, flight controller. That's an F7 and it's a total unknown to me. I'm concerned about reliability and lack of filtering, but I figured uh, this will be very light and if I don't try, I won't know if it's reliable. The brand is well known. I know they've had problems before with their uh, whoop boards, but uh, it seems to be okay now. So I'll give it a shot and hopefully uh, it will be uh, reliable. For the camera, I decided to go with the uh, Foxeer T-Rex. I've had good luck with Foxeer before. Uh, it's pretty expensive, but it has very good reviews and the camera is very important to me because my eyes aren't what they used to be. So I really need to see things clearly and a good camera will help do that. It is of course a 19 millimeter camera, micro size. And uh, this should be, uh, this should work really well. See, I have uh, HRO lenses uh, in my Attitude uh, V5 goggles because I do need uh, the correction, so otherwise uh, <laughs> it's just blurry. I did get uh, titanium screws for the stack and this will save a tiny bit of weight. I'm not sure it's important, but you know, everything you can uh, save uh, so much the better. It does add up. There is a 1000 microfarad capacitor that comes with the uh, controller JGMCU and that's very important because of course they don't have the space to put more capacitance on the board so you really have to use this. I just wish it was uh, 50 volts instead of 35 and these feel very light. They basically feel like aluminum screws but, but much stronger. I can't wait to get my motor screws. I might have to use, of course, the, uh, the steel screws uh, provided by Diatone. I really like the fact that uh, Geparsi uses plastic, I mean, uh, rubber grommets on their frames here for the stack. That's very good to dampen vibrations. I protected the grommets with uh, plastic washers and uh, secured them with plastic nuts. I uh, don't want to squeeze them too hard, uh, not to lose the dampening effect. And it will leave space here also for the uh, ventilation of the uh, FETs for the uh, ESCs. The capacitor is going to be riding here between the standoffs, so I want to make sure it has the uh, necessary clearance from the uh, top plate before I solder it. And that should do it just about like this. Also, there are cables that are going to have to be uh, going by here. So I'm going to put some flux on the pads also. It used to be that we didn't used to do that because, of course, the flux was included in the solder. Now, it's really hard these days to find a good quality solder anymore. And the uh, lead-free uh, solder is really crap i mean it's just it's just awful the old stuff we had the toxic <laughs> leaded solder was much better and i'm actually using leaded solder but it's still not as good as it used to be i'm going to use a lot of heat right away and put a lot of solder on those pads because of course i'm going to have to solder the wires onto them so you want to heat both the uh, lead and the pad for a little bit not too long but those uh, ground pads are very big and the ground plane is all over the board so it's not even taking uh, very quickly here and that's because the heat is dissipated by the ground plane and uh, it's hard it's hard to solder those uh, those big uh, ground pads the plus pad should be easier now you really want to be careful not to uh, make any short to other components, but I'm not going to put any more solder here. I'm just going to wait a little bit that uh, it flows, but I don't know, it doesn't look very good. And my uh, soldering iron is set to 460 uh, Celsius, so it's quite a bit of heat. Maybe I have to go to a 480, 490. All right, this will do it. 
see the difference? The plus flowed and it's nice and uh, it covers the whole pad. The ground plane, uh, <laughs> it's just a blob and it, it, it is sticking. It's a good contact, but uh, it's just not the best. Now I can solder the leads on, but again, the minus is going to be a problem. And that is a big wire too, so that will be soaking up heat as well. And you do want a good contact here because of course a lot of amps uh, are going to be flowing through that wire. As I predicted, it's not pretty, but I believe it's mechanically and electrically sound enough. So I'm not going to push it too hard. I don't want to damage components because of heat or lift the pad from the board. I guess that will have to do. I did sort of a little bit on the bottom here too. And I think that should do it. Now I'm going to tin the uh, ESC pads. I put some flux on them too. I need to increase the temperature a bit. And those are smaller motors, but uh, those wires are pretty thin. Not many amps flowing through them, I guess. That should uh, give me a longer flight time, hope, uh, hopefully. All right, I wired all the motors. The wires go here, behind, and to the contacts here. Your solder joints must be uh, nice and shiny. Uh, remember, for anything that flies, the reliability of the whole system is the reliability of its weakest point. And the weak points in any build like this are the solder joints. If at all possible, avoid lead-free solder. Uh, they will make a dull, really uh, powdery joints, dry joints, and uh, eventually they will crack and they will just the wire will fall off and you'll use your quad. The flight controller, of course, is the brain of the operation, so uh, you have to take very good care of soldering uh, your contacts. And those are very small, those pads are very small, so it's not easy to do. You really have to practice soldering for quite some time before trying something like this. Because remember, this flies. And there is also a liability problem, and I'll talk about that also about using uh, the uh, control system. Because you lose your quad, you lose control, you don't know where it's going to end up, uh, what it's going to hit, or who it's going to hit. So, uh, very important to uh, make very good solder joints. And I will talk about the control system. I'm waiting for my receiver. It's a TBS Crossfire uh, Diversity uh, Nano Receiver. And that means two receivers in one. So it has two receiving chips and it, it uses two antennas. Depending on where the antenna is, and I'll talk about that later, uh, the receiver will choose the best signal coming from the best antenna and the best receiver chip. So uh, that extends your range quite a bit. And also the frequency used is lower than the usual 2.4 gigahertz. It's 858, 868 megahertz in Europe and 915 megahertz in the US. So that's a much lower frequency and it penetrates much better. It has a much better range than 2.4 gigahertz. So I use Crossfire, I have a Tango 2 remote and uh, I use TBS receivers. That extends my range. I don't want to lose a quad because I don't have enough range. For me, it's not an economically viable solution. Uh, I may have spent a little bit more buying the Tango 2 and the receivers are more expensive. Uh, $30 for a regular receiver and $50 for a diversity receiver. And that's a lot of money. But I'd rather spend maybe $20 more and not lose my quad than uh, taking the risk of using a lesser system. And for whatever reason, you know, you never know why you have to fly, you know, your quad might end up further than you intended and I want the range to be able to bring it back. So that's the reason for the uh, Crossfire receiver, which hopefully will arrive very soon. The reason I'm running the wires here behind the standoffs and not directly to the uh, ESC contacts here is because you often grab your quad like this and you touch those wires and you move them. And you do that enough times and those wires, the contacts, uh, the solder joints are going to break. And the wires are going to fall off basically. And if it happens during a flight, well, you know what happens then. 
so I run them behind and this way it's nice and clean and I don't have to worry about those wires moving and the solder joints cracking after a while. So I have a lot of space uh, left here in the back. I will put the uh, video transmitter here, which is a rush tank, uh, 800 milliwatts, uh, but goes down to 25 as well. The receiver, I'm not sure if I'm going to put it here or above the flight controller. Uh, usually you want the receiver to be away from anything else and uh, you don't want the receiver to be uh, necessarily next to the video transmitter either because that can cause, uh, you know, interference. Now, I will be using a shield between uh, the receiver and whatever it's next to or above. Also, I will be shielding the GPS wires, important, uh, to go to the uh, flight controller. And here I have to find a path for the uh, power cables. I want to attach them in such a way that I can remove the top plate without having to uh, worry about the cables and probably uh, attach them to here or you know maybe a standoff in the back I'm not quite sure yet but I have to make a decision soon because I want to test those motors now the flat side of the power connector is the plus and that's going to require quite a bit of heat I really need one of those silicone mats to solder on. This is not the right place to do that. And the minus. By the way, I didn't do it, but you should put a, uh, a plug on the other end here so that it keeps its shape. If the plastic melts, uh, the pins inside can move and uh, you'll have trouble using the connector later. But always a good idea to put a plug in like this before you solder so that the pins don't move. One thing to uh, keep in mind when you build a quad like this is that all those components at some point are going to require a replacement. And you have to consider that uh, leaving enough slack everywhere and thinking about your wires and everything else, just to make sure that replacing those components is just going to be a big hassle. And it will be, but <laughs> the less the better. Okay, this is a scary moment. I already checked that there was no short with a multimeter, but I should be using uh, what's called a smoke stopper. I don't have one, but uh, this is very scary. Of course, you shouldn't have your props on. That goes without saying. All right, that's the sound I like to hear. Now I'm going to plug in the uh, USB cable. and That's a USB-C cable, by the way. Uh, mostly uh, it's micro USB but the newest controllers have the USB-C and I'm going to be able to use the uh, Betaflight program to program the quad. Cool, huh? The one thing you need to do is to make sure your motors are turning the right way and uh, those motors are brushless so Basically, I could reverse the uh, the motor by changing one of the three wires, but I, I don't want to do that, of course, so I can change that in software. Okay, so I'm going to the motors pad here. Um, then I'm going to confirm that if I kill myself, it's my own fault. <laughs> and I go to motors. And of course, I'm going to check with a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing here that see which way they turn. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, motor number one. Oh, it's the one on the bottom here. Now what I do want is the motors to turn outwards. Usually the, it's propped in. I want prop out because this way if you hit something, uh, a branch say, the branch is not taken by the props and brought inside and blocks your um, prop and fries your uh, controller ESC so I want props out and I have to say that in the software that I want prop out now motor number one here is turning the wrong way oops motor number two is turning the right way motor number three is turning outwards that's good motor number four turning inwards that's not good so motors one and four need to be reversed and that's using another software okay i'm going to be using a bl heli suite and i could take a screenshot but 
and that's good enough. So basically you're going to use that to reverse all oh, uh, new versions available. Yes. Okay, well it didn't download, so I'm just gonna use this version here. I'm gonna try to connect. Uh, it needs to be powered on, so that's done. And I will read the setup. And it's working. So here I'm on ESC1, which I will have to uh, reverse, so motor direction reversed. And uh, let's see, motor number four. Maybe I should flash it first, I think. Flash? Yes. Motor number two, I'm going to flash, but uh, I'm not going to reverse it. ESC number three, uh, Flash it too, but not to reverse it. Is it latest? Latest. Now it should be latest. Okay. I'll have to recheck number two. Okay. ESC number, oops, number four. Okay, number four. Reversed. Flash. No, not normal. Why did it go back to normal? Right setup, maybe? Yes, latest, reversed. Maybe uh, number one wasn't uh, reversed and I have to check that out. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect. I really wonder about uh, ESC number one. So I'm gonna close that for now and go back to beta flight. Oh, ESC is restarting. Connect beta flight. Go to the motors. Enable. Yeah, number one is still uh, the wrong way. Yes, prop out, that's good. So it's number one. ESC number one, I'm going to reverse. And clicked on the right setup. Obviously that's what I forgot to do the first time. Prop out, great. Number two, prop out. Number three, Prop out, number four, prop out. All done for the motors. So here's what I'm doing for the GPS. Uh, I got the shield here from a coax cable. I think it was RG58. So I took the center of the coax out. I threaded the wires in. I put a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing here and I'm going to put more here onto the wires. So I have my cable shielded here and that's very important because that cable is going to run next to the video transmitter and you don't want that um, to affect your GPS signal. So I'm going to put the uh, heat shrink tubing here so I can connect, I can run it like so and connect it to the uh, flight controller. Now the uh, Rush Tank VTX is in place. It's the uh, Rush Tank uh, Ultimate, which has a microphone, which is very nice. Unfortunately, the wires they give you are too short and they don't reach the front of the flight controller here. It's missing about five millimeters, which is a shame because I'm going to have to extend those wires. Uh, so I'm going to have to add about five millimeters of wire, which is, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, rush. Come on guys, just a couple of centimeters more of wire that just doesn't cost that much. I'm still waiting for the receiver, but I uh, 3D printed a mount here for the uh, TBS Nino Diversity. And I have a plate here, just a plastic plate insulator. And in between I will put this uh, diatone ground plane and it will insulate the receiver from the flight controller basically for RF currents. So this will avoid a lot of problems, uh, interference between the receiver, which also transmits, don't forget, the telemetry and the flight controller. So uh, that will be a big plus. And of course you have to connect the ground to one of these pads here. So uh, for that to work, but uh, Hopefully I'll have enough space. Well, I should have enough space, really. I'm just worried about uh, the strap. But I guess I'm lucky I'm using an all-in-one board. Otherwise, I would have a, a second, you know, the, the ESC first, and then 
the flight controller and then the receiver or I would put the receiver in the back. I guess I would have to put the receiver in the back then. Oh, and I installed the buzzer, a V-Fly buzzer. So that's a self-powered buzzer. It has a battery. So even if your battery gets uh, ejected during a crash, the buzzer will, will keep beeping and that's uh, great. Always have a buzzer. So the video cable, the video wire to the VTX and uh, that's a smart audio here. Those will be soldered here uh, on top of that little uh, copper tape. Uh, not on the tape because the tape is going to be connected to ground. And I'll explain why. Because simply, so this will be uh, uh, extended here. This is one wire, video, smart audio. This will be sandwiched. It will be insulated, of course, but it will be sandwiched between this ground plane and this one. So it will be shielded basically. So uh, shielding the video cable from interference from the both the flight controller and the receiver. And that should uh, give me a clean video. Now I'm starting to rethink the fact that I'm using an all-in-one board because I'm just thinking if I ever fry an ESC on this board, I have so many wires connected to it and I would have to redo everything from scratch and that would be such a pain and next time I will not use an all-in-one board but an ESC board, well all-in-one ESC at least, but I would use definitely uh, a separate flight controller because it would be so much work to redo everything. And by the way, when I solder a wire, I give it a good tug, you know, every time to check that it's really, really well soldered and that there is no dry solder joint. Uh, not to the point of lifting a pad from the circuit board, of course, so that would be bad, but just enough to, to know that it's on there uh, pretty well. And that is what I had to do because Rush FPV doesn't want to give us wires that would be one centimeter longer. Okay, looks good. So we have the uh, flight controller. Then we have a TPA insulating board, plastic. We have the diato, well, I have the uh, copper tape. On top of that, I have the video wires. Then I have this diatone ground plane shield. Then I have this uh, 3D printed holder for the uh, receiver. And that's it. Now, I don't have the receiver, of course, but I guess I can test the uh, VTX and maybe the buzzer. Let's see if that works. Always plug in an antenna in your VTX before powering it up or uh, you could fry the uh, final transistors in it. And uh, well, the rush should have uh, some protection like the uh, TBS VTXs, but uh, not all VTXs have, uh, you know, protection, overheating uh, protection. And even that's not guaranteed. First, I'll just uh, power it up through uh, USB and hopefully, whoops, it's not going to start smoking. Well, the beeper works, that's for sure. All right, well, it's one thing less to worry about. Now I'm going to plug in a battery and uh, check the VTX. <sighs> it's pretty scary. All right, you'll see it the, the same time I do. And Okay, here's a 5S1100. Uh, if this goes up in flames, it's going to be big. I see no image. Let's switch channel, maybe. Oh, well, yeah, there is something, but you know what? I don't have the camera connected. I can see the OSD is on, but uh, it's flickering and there's no camera. So I'm going to plug in the camera. And that is not good at all. Uh, there is some pulsing interference here and uh, I don't know if it's because of my uh, creative wire routing or not. I certainly need to figure that out. Back to square one. Well, for the VTX at least. Um, I did get the receiver and it came with a bunch of wires that are long enough so that I can make a direct connection to the VTX, which I'm going to uh, unglue here so never use <laughs> double-sided tape before you've tested everything so that was a bad idea because it's going to be a pain to remove that double-sided tape really sticks like crazy <sighs> why did i do this why why uh... all right i'm going to tin it so i'll solder the wires and that will be better than a connector 
what I need is more light really uh, this is too dark okay little tug yes it's holding that ground pad is always trouble always tug good all right so I tested it just like this no flickering so the question is now of course when I put it in the quad is it going to start to flicker all right, I plugged in the uh, receiver. You can see there are two antennas because it's a diversity receiver. There are two receiving chips here. The uh, cabling is ground, plus five volt. Then we have the uh, TX pad, which goes to the RX on the board, on the flight controller. And here we have the uh, RX pad, which goes to the TX pad on the flight controller. Now, most flight controllers have a dedicated pad that gets power from the USB. So, which means that you won't have to plug in a battery to uh, power the receiver, which is great because that way you can set up your receiver in beta flight. So let's give it a shot. What I'm going to do first is uh, start my Tango 2. Welcome to Tango 2. Throttle warning. Switch warning. And then I'm going to put it in bind mode, crossfire menu. Oh, I should have used the, uh, the new um, menu there, but that's fine. Tango to, there we go, bind. So do that first and then you turn on the receiver and we'll see, it should ask me, the remote should ask me if I want to update the firmware, which of course I will say yes. So it says binding here, update diversity RX. Yes. Okay, and now it goes into updating. By the way, that port I told you about, the one that has the five volts from the USB, I'm using it for my receiver to charge the beeper and for the GPS. So when I'm in the field, I don't have to wait for the GPS to get many satellites. I don't have to plug in my LiPo to wait for that. So I can just plug in a, a power pack, you know, USB and, and I'll do it. The beeper, I want to be charged uh, all the time because if you uh, don't charge it enough from the beginning, uh, it, it's not going to beep for long. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a short flight, a few minutes is not enough to charge uh, the beeper completely. So uh, it's good to be able to charge it with USB. And of course, the receiver is helping for uh, setting up uh, your receiver tabs uh, on Betaflight. So I did calibrate the accelerometer. By the way, I had to reflash the board because uh, it was missing uh, standard, uh, the standard setup. But I did back up what was on it before, then I reflashed and then I'm restored. So ports. And I have my uh, a re a receiver on a UART 2. I have the GPS on 3 and I have the... Uh, VTX control for the video transmitter on five. I'm planning on using on using six for the uh, the camera, my SMO 4K. So anyway, configuration. I set up uh, motor direction is reversed because I have prop out. This I left uh, as it was. Uh, that sounds reasonable. One thing I changed is the uh, 180 degree. Uh, allowing me to arm the quad in any position, that's important. 8 kilohertz, okay, that's fast enough, it's an F7. We don't have a magnetometer, the craft name I don't care. I set up the GPS, U-Blox is the uh, protocol. Checked everything here. Only enabled air mode, OSD, dynamic filter. Power and battery, nothing special here. Uh, this scale was provided by uh, GHEMCU, by the way. Failsafe, uh, you have to make sure that I have GPS rescue enabled. And uh, make sure that I can arm without uh, enough satellites, because sometimes I fly in my parking garage and <laughs> there are no satellites there. Maximum altitude, fine. Failsafe only for sanity checks. Uh, PID tuning, I left everything as is because, of course, Beta Flight is set up for a 5 inch quad, which is what I have. I set up VBAT PID compensation, which uh, 
uh, keeps the same feel as the battery voltage goes down. You just have to keep an eye on your battery voltage, of course. Receiver. Uh, here uh, you have to choose a Spectrum Grapner JR so that uh, the throttle is the throttle and so on. Didn't change anything here and it works fine. The modes, you have to add different modes, so arm, angle, horizon. I don't use angle, that's a, uh, limiting the uh, angle your quad can fly. Uh, horizon I use quite a bit because it's uh, it's a good training for uh, acro later and I have GPS rescue of course on a button the beeper is on a button flip over after crash is on a button as well oh adjustments because I have more than well let's go to OSD first because I need to show you something so that's my OSD on screen display with all the information and I have different OSD profiles. Number one has the uh, geographical coordinates, but I don't always, you know, want that to be on for anybody to see. So I have my second profile where it's not there, and I have a third profile where I hide even more stuff. I know, I know. <laughs> and this will be chosen by a button here, Oak 6. So I selected that, then I went to the drop down menu, I went to OSD profile selection, but OX6 here, and that's my button number 6 is going to uh, switch between OSD profiles. GPS, nothing there, motors, I checked that, OSD, we've just seen this. On Betaflight now you have to put a VTX table, so uh, I got this one from uh, Oscar Liang for the uh, Rush uh, Tank uh, Ultimate. And it works fine, it's uh, TBS Smart Audio, so you have to put the value here in uh, decibels, which is a pain in the ass. Excuse my French. And that's it, uh, black box, uh, no logging, uh, because I don't know how to use it. So, <laughs> And what I did is I uh, went to the CLI at the end, I saved everything, of course. I did a uh, diff all, D-I-F-F -F all and uh, copied and pasted that into a text file for backup and I also went to setup and I did a backup using the uh, setup menu whoops disconnected and that was it anyway <laughs> all right let's see if this thing will fly Three hundred thirty-six grams. I guess that's pretty good. Uh, let's put a battery. Five S eleven hundred. Four fifty-five. That's uh, pretty light, I would say, for a five-inch. It flies. <laughs> well, I I had no doubt, but you know, sometimes you plug it in and uh, you see smoke, and uh, yeah, it does happen. But uh, I'm surprised at how well a five-inch flies and how stable it is compared to. A smaller one and it reminds me a bit of my uh, FX Cinerat uh, which is a three inch drone but it's a Cinewhoop and it's pretty heavy so I think the weight uh, contributes to uh, the stability of the drone now really happy also about the uh, the motors the uh, Mamba 2204 1450 KVs which are discontinued for the moment, uh, I believe. I had to order them from Australia, as I mentioned, and uh, uh, fortunately I got six, <laughs> just in case. Uh, but uh, they uh, seem to be very efficient because I get 12 minutes of slow flight using a uh, 5S1100. I'm going to order a 5S1300 
I could order 6s and I probably will later but uh, I want to try 5s first uh, maybe to be uh, gentler on the board so to speak and I'm not sure that's true because of course uh, less uh, voltage means more current so that might not be the, the right thing to go uh, about it but um, I can use the 5s also on my uh, Cinerat so those will be uh, good batteries to get Hopefully this lockdown will, uh, will won't be too long and I'll be able to go up in the mountains and uh, show you the, uh, the beauty of the uh, Alp Maritime department here. Uh, great mountains and great uh, views, so uh, let's hope. I hope you all are well and uh, until next time, have a good one.